What's up everybody, Doug, Big Kid Power Sports, and today we're gonna teach you how to completely rebuild your recoil on your snowmobile. New rope, new spring, the whole shebang. All right, on this recoil, we're gonna really marry it and we're going all the way down to the spring. So, if your spring works, you know, if you, if you can turn that and it recoils and snaps and everything just fine, it's just needing rope, check out the link below. That's really going to save you some time. You got the easy way out. You're just putting rope in it. The rest of you, if you found this video, we're going all the way down to bare housing. Everything's coming out. So we've got an XLT recoil here, Polaris XLT. This is a super basic one, Arctic Cat, a lot of Yamahas. A lot of recoils look just like this as far as the mechanisms go. Skidoo's a little different, some of the vintage stuff's a little different, but we're gonna give you the general idea here. Okay, so if you're gonna go, if we're gonna do this, stuff's messed up, right? Okay, that's what's going on inside your recoil. Biggest thing. We're going to take the bolt off the middle, so the nut off the middle, it's usually about a 10 mil, something like that. Pop that off, this disc that's next, that's going to come off. And then your little dog and spring here, that's going to come out. Now we're down to the pulley. Whew, here we go. This is the part that everyone hates. Oh my gosh, my spring's all goofed up in here. I don't know why recoils are so terrifying to people. This spring actually looks pretty good. What you're looking for is that inside end is typically what gets messed up. So this guy right here. Uh, there's some of it, you might pop it open, and you know it's all clammed up and shut down, bent and all kinds of stuff. Put it this way, if you're going this far, I suggest you start with a new spring, okay? The new spring, uh, the springs are 10 bucks. They come all wound up, ready to go. You literally line it up, drop it in. But that's the easy way of doing things. I'm gonna show you how to rewind a spring from this scenario. So let's see, the outside. <clears throat> In your recoil housing, there's a little notch. That's where the spring's gonna start, okay? On the outside of your spring, there's a little, there's a hook end, okay? Got that? So that goes in that notch. You know, just hook that on the edge there. We're going counterclockwise. So just take it. Start spinning the housing around, feeding the spring inside. There's a lot of different ways of doing this. Some guys use the board with three screws in it and wind it up and then put it in first. You're essentially playing with a big kid jack-in-the-box right here. It's not a fun game to play sometimes. But, just keep pressure on that spring. Just keep walking it around. It's gonna get easier and easier. Just don't rush it. And the big key is to just keep pressure in holding that spring into the housing area here. Okay, you get to a point where you can just keep spinning it, guiding it in with the other hand. See, it's not bad. No one lost an eye, right? I'm not bleeding. Everybody has these horror stories of, oh man, that's how Phil lost his finger doing a recoil. I ain't doing that. Come on. Right? That wasn't that bad. 
No one's crying. I'm not sitting in the fetal position in the corner. That was not bad at all. All right. While you're doing this, let's put new rope in this thing, right? We don't want to use old rope and whatnot. You can if you want to. Guess what? I don't want to. All right. So we've got a uh, new length of, s of string ready to go. That's going to be last. Okay. So if you did everything right, now we're going to really test to see if I should have used the old spring or not. Drop it in. It should just catch. This one is not. That's perfect. It's really not that bad, so let's see if we can get it to catch. Nope. All right. <clears throat> All that really is going to happen here is you just want this little notch here to catch on the inside hook of that spring. And this ain't going to do it. Oh! We got it! Alright, so that's caught on there. Before we start winding everything up, we're not done yet. The little dog spring. Well, there's a long end and a short end of that spring. You see that? So the long end goes into the pulley. There's a little hole there. Drop that in there. That sits flush. Flush. The dog is next. Okay, so now the little part of the spring that's sticking up, that goes in this notch of the dog right there. The dog sits on that pulley portion and that little spring kicks the dog back in when this all recoils back together. That's what happens there. The bottom of this, this is your center disc, right? In the, the Paul kit. If you need these bits and pieces, this, the dog, the spring, that all comes in a kit. That little weird shape thing on the bottom here, that all comes as a kit. That's a Paul kit, P-A-W-L. So if you're looking for one of those, give us a call. We've got those in stock. They're 10 bucks for that. So, so far, if you have to go completely new, 10 bucks for a spring, 10 bucks for a pulley, 10 bucks for a Paul kit. And while this popped off, let's just show you how that works. This little C-clip looking thing. That just pops into the bottom of that pulley, of that uh, disc. All right. My dog popped off while I was flapping my gums here. Okay. <clears throat> so. This little disc and that little bump right there, that lines up on the dog, okay? This only fits on one way. There's a notch here, there's a notch inside the pulley. So what you're going to want to happen is that bump, this little bump out here, to fit up against the edge of the dog. That's what the dog hits. Okay? When this, yeah, I'll show you. Let's lock this thing up before we start messing with it. That goes on there, and then your little nut goes on. And you want to tighten that up good enough. Okay. Now you got this all buttoned up, right? So this is what we're going to do now. Just test this, make sure it works properly. This is, this would be you pulling on the rope. Pops that dog out, the dog hits the magneto flywheel, the little cup on that, that spins your motor, that braps you away into just bliss. Okay? <clears throat> so, we can switch over to our other video that shows you how to put recoil rope in, but while we're this far, let's just do this thing. So we got seven feet of new recoil rope. 
You want to singe the end of that, preferably with a lighter that actually works. Here we go. Just want to get that into a nice little point so you can work with it. This is a nice quality, heavy duty rope. Um, so this is going to be, this is going to be easy. So now you wind it up, get it nice and tight. Oh, just when you think it's about to snap, I would stop there. You could feel it. You probably, I mean, you could pop the spring a couple times on it. You just get an idea. But you want it nice and tight. So when it does recoil, it pulls all the slack. You know, what we should have done before we did this is you want to tie a knot in the other end. I always forget to do that portion. If you don't tie a knot in that end, well, you're going to pull the whole thing right through and then you, that's not going to work out very well. Alright, so we're going to poke through that singed end, poke that through the pulley. You might want to use some needle nose, guide it through the guide hole, out the recoil. There it is. Pull that rope through. Make sure that knot sits nice and tight in there so it's out of the way. And please, at this point, do not let go of that rope. That thing will suck it in there before you even know what happened. You don't want to put your handle on just yet because you got a lot of recoil guides to rip th wrap this all through. But look at that. A recoil. All ready to go. I didn't cry. I didn't lose an eyeball. I didn't bleed. We are good to go. If you have any questions, if you need help further than that, if you are huddled in a corner because you just cannot do this thing, give us a call, 815-363-1254. We're gonna walk you through it. If you have to replace everything inside here, you're what, 30, 35, 40 bucks, maybe, depending on what machine it is. Very rarely do you have to replace the whole housing, but sometimes I have seen damage to the stuff, you know, where it just isn't repairable. But I think you're going to be all right. Again, give us a call, 815-363-1254 if you need parts, advice, help, if you just need somebody to talk to for a second, uh, feel free. Thanks, guys, and good luck. You might want to wear safety glasses. I know. If you want to. You might want to have a couple beers also.